Staying alive in deep space is no easy matter. For the astronauts aboard the first spacecraft to Mars, their last look back at Earth is a distant memory. Meteorite shower, meteorite shower. Roger, we're coming in. Any hope of rescue is long past. These six people have gone further than anyone before. Now they're completely on their own. Mars sits waiting, beckoning, at the other end, hundreds of millions of kilometers away. But to get there, the astronauts have to cross a minefield of deep space dangers. And it's not just meteorites that will endanger their lives. Weightlessness seems like harmless fun, but months in zero gravity wreak havoc on the human body. They will come back with the bone of a 90-year-old individual. Bone and muscle loss have plagued long-duration flights for almost 30 years. Artificial gravity is the holy grail when it comes to long-duration weightlessness on your way to Mars. And there's another deadly force waiting in deep space. Cosmic radiation, generated at the core of dying stars, explodes out across the solar system. Fireworks, celestial fireworks, would be going off in my brain. This is cosmic radiation. Microscopic missiles pass through the skin of a spacecraft like a pin through a child's balloon. Very low doses of this cosmic ray can destroy brain cells. Scientists and engineers believe cosmic rays can be beaten and the search is on for solutions. Okay. But the best protection may be to send robotic astronauts to do the most dangerous work required on the journey to Mars. We're gonna give them the very best technology we've got so they come back safely. For two and a half years, six people will be caregivers to one another. It's them against the universe. Clear it. On a mission to Mars, the number one goal is staying alive. This is not really what life is like in deep space. TV and movies make it look easy by adding make-believe gravity to their make-believe spacecraft. This is the reality of zero gravity. No gravity at all, everything floats. People who've been there like it. You know, you're out in space and it is effortless. You're just literally floating everywhere. It's absolutely wonderful. It is so easy to move about by just pushing on a wall, a small little pressure, and you float in the other direction. But it's not good for your body. We end up losing muscle mass. We end up losing bone mass. And we also lose the ability to stand upright or even to sit upright. U.S. astronaut Heidi Piper trained like all her colleagues for a space shuttle mission in 2006. But when she returned to Earth, Piper got a surprise. And so I figure I could stand here, standing enough. Piper's legs buckled after just 12 days in weightlessness. How will the Mars crew be affected by up to two years of zero gravity? Retired U.S. astronaut Jerry Lininger knows all about the muscle-sapping power of zero gravity. He spent over 3,000 hours in space, including nearly five months on the Russian space station Mir. In that time, he lost 65% of his muscle strength. Before zero gravity, Lininger could easily lift 45 kilos over his head. After five months weightless in space, he could only manage 16 kilos. You're my main guy, yeah. <laughs> Two or three year trip to Mars, I think you can expect some very severe muscle atrophy. It's estimated the trip to Mars, six months there and six months back, 
would result in a 50% loss in muscle strength. And it's not just the muscles that are affected. Zero gravity is tough on the bones, too. For a 40, 45-year-old male going out on that trip and coming back, they will come back with the bone of a 90-year-old individual. The bones lose their calcium and become brittle. They could snap just opening a hatch. A misstep could break an ankle or a leg. For the Mars mission, finding a solution to zero gravity is top on the agenda. Marta is the Russians may have the answer. They already have experience with long duration flights and its effect on cosmonauts. For 20 years, they've been looking for a solution. The fix may come by creating weightlessness on Earth. After just seven days stretched out in a rubberized bag, floating in water, most test subjects lose 40% of their strength. To beat that effect, engineers have created a suit fitted out with bungee cords that will make their muscles work all the way to Mars. And electronic pulses that trick leg muscles into expanding and contracting. It's not high tech, but it goes some way to keeping the bones and muscles in shape. The standard countermeasure in orbit now is daily workouts. Two to four hours a day of grim exercise, very unpopular with the crews. A lot of self-discipline, though, to get on that treadmill in the first place, because it is not a very pleasant experience. And it's not all that effective. You just have a hard time countering 22 hours of floating effortlessly. The best way to solve the problem is to create gravity on board the Mars ship. Artificial gravity is the holy grail when it comes to protecting the astronauts against the deconditioning that goes with long duration weightlessness on your way to Mars. To create artificial gravity, the Mars spaceship must be designed to spin. It works like a merry-go-round. The centrifugal force presses on the crew's bodies, just like the Earth's gravitational pull. Early designs of artificial gravity spacecraft were huge, too big to be practical. Up to 100 meters in diameter, spinning very slowly. Guaranteed to work, guaranteed never to fly because of its expense. But one design which is very appealing and is, would not be terribly expensive, it would consist of a spacecraft and its power supply separated by a tether. The Mars spaceship will start the journey like a rocket. But when it hits cruising speed, they cut the engines and switch to the slow turning mode. Spin up for artificial gravity has been initiated. 0.7 G at 4.5. When the spacecraft reaches the right spinning speed, it establishes artificial gravity for the crew. The technology to create gravity in an entire spacecraft could be years away, so Lawrence Young is developing an alternative at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Hi, you comfortable in there? Yeah, really good. Let's see a step on each foot. We've got a 20. Only the person using the machine feels artificial gravity. This is easier, 